Canon has started shipping on their highly anticipated new lens. This is a 30 to 300 Super 35 zoom. It is available in both PL and EF mounts. It's really highly anticipated, one, because it's Canon, they make great glass, but the other is because it's a physically smaller and lighter weight lens than other lenses of similar ranges available from other manufacturers. So it does need a little support foot because it weighs about 12, 13 pounds, but that's a lot less and, uh, than others and it's just physically not that tough to deal with at all. It's a really comfortable workhorse type lens. Other aspects of its size, are it has a 136 millimeter front, so it'll fit on a standard matte box. And uh, so well, some other specs on it, uh, T2.95 for the maximum aperture, and that holds throughout almost the entire zoom range until you get up to 240 millimeters. And then Canon is just a very conservative company, very straightforward. They want to be very clear what their lens does. So from, uh, from 240 up to 300, they mark a little orange line and they say, well, th just so you know, this, at this point, uh, you're just using the very center of the lens at that point because you're really hyper telephoto. And so it drops a little in exposure. It goes down to a T3.7. So it's about half a stop difference. And it's a minor thing. Frankly, all lenses of this kind of zoom range have a drop off and they just, well, Canon wants to be very, very clear about what's going on with their lens. So we've taken a known quantity, the uh, Airy Alexa, which we really are quite pleased with the image that can make as well as we understand and know what it's doing. And we take a full raster, full resolution monitor that we also know what it does. This particular one is from Panasonic. And uh, we just look at what the lens uh, does for us. Now we have a couple of test charts here, but you could always point at a person. You can point at a sheet of newspaper with uh, fine print on it. You have different ways that you can evaluate it. I'll show you some of the things that you can look for in a lens and how the Canon performs. This is a Macbeth color chart, which shows you contrast uh, in these blocks, as well as the primary, secondary colors and some other important colors along the way. This is the cam bells from DSC Labs, which are just to represent different flesh tones, different skin tones of uh, different uh, nationalities, if you will. And uh, you can just look at those images and how sharp is the resolution, how nice is the contrast, what is the color representation. This lens is a little bit on the warm side and that's on purpose and what that does, you balance the camera through it and then it enriches the skin tones, it enriches the warmer part of the spectrum and digital cameras are always looking at the blues anyway so you want to have more of that warmth in it and it balances very nicely. It's a very attractive organic look if you will for a way to term it. Another thing that I like to do is zoom in a bit, I'll just grab a quick focus here and then I look at contrast in an image, and I look at you know an actual living image here, and so I can look at a bright white next to a dark, and sometimes I'll just take a sheet of paper and stick that in there and see how they go next to each other, and if one bleeds onto another, of course you can take a camera and point it at a window uh, and then have a subject stand in front and see if one bleeds on the other, and these are just looking at contrast in the frame and how the lens handles contrast. Now some other tests you can perform is just take focus and go crazy with it. Just rack it from one extreme to the other. And what you're looking at there when you do that is something called focus breathing. And you can see that, I mean, I'm knocking this around a bit, but really the image stays very stable as I shift this focus. And what it would look like on a lens that doesn't correct for this very well is it would look like a little zoom kind of effect where you're moving a lens around inside there, you're moving some elements, and so it actually changes the, uh, the magnification. And uh, this lens, the 30-300, is corrected extremely well for that, so it stays a very stable image. Other tests that we perform when we do this is I like to zoom in a bit, grab a quick focus there, and I look at how the focus falls off. So if this is my point of focus, does it drop off very dramatically, very, very quickly? Or does it have, even if it's just as sharp, have a more gentle roll off in the focus? And in having a gentle roll off in the focus, does that have a more uh, organic feel? Or do you not notice so much the poppiness of the sharpness of the lens? It's not a good or a bad thing as much as it's personal preference. Some people take lenses that pop really sharp and then they put diffusion on it so it doesn't feel quite so poppy. Other people like lenses that have a gentle roll off because they feel it's a much more pleasing transition. The Canon 30-300 has a, I would say, a 
pretty gentle roll-off. What we found in the, when the lens techs were checking is that it had a, a fairly soft curve to it, and that made for a nice organic, if you will, pleasing image. Uh, these are some of the basic tests you can do. There's others as well that are available. Uh, I, we can say that the 3300 in the test that we did here, looking at a subject, as well as on all of our equipment, has performed extremely well, and we're very, very pleased with it. It's Canon 30 to 300 zoom, Super 35, in T uh, 2.95, and it's available now from Able Cine.